Okay, so this is the video for this brain model. And I'm only going to do parts of lab 2 and lab 4 that are visible on this model. So for lab 2, you won't be able to see any part of the meninges. But you can see the ventricular system. And that's in the inside. So let me wanna take this apart. So the lateral ventricles would be within this area. So it would be all within that area. And then the choroid plexus would be a part of the lateral ventricles. The interventricular foramen, that would be where it goes from the lateral ventricle to the... Um, third ventricle, so this area right here is the interventricular foramen or foramen of Monroe. And then we have the third ventricles would be this area. The cerebral aqueduct would be this area right here. And the fourth ventricle would be around this area right here. And on the corpus callosum, we have the rostrum, the genu, the body, the splenium, and then on the diencephalon, which is this area right here, we have the anterior commissure, the posterior commissure, which is right here, oh, right here, the fornix, this is the fornix. We have the epithalamus right here. This is the pineal gland or pineal body. This is the hypothalamus. This is the thalamus. We have the mammillary body. This is the mammillary body. Um, the infidibulum connects the pituitary gland or the neurohypophysis. And then we have the pulvinar, which is on the back right here. It's the pulvinar. And then we have the medial geniculate. And then we have the lateral geniculate. And then next we have the Brodmann's areas. So then the precentral gyrus consists of the four and six, which is in front of the central sulcus. And that's this area right here in front of the central sulcus. And then we have Broca's area, which is 45 and 46, which is this area. And then we have the postcentral gyrus, which is this area right here. And then we have the sensory association cortex, which is um, the posterior part of the parietal lobe. And this area right here by the sylvian fissure. And then we have Herschel's gyrus, which is um, right here, right below the sylvian fissure. And then we have the um, sorry. We, then we have the auditory association cortex, cortex, which is right below the Herschel's gyrus, which is this area right here. And then we have the parahippocampal gyrus, which would be around the hippocampal formation, and that would be this area right here, parahippocampal gyrus. And then we have the cingulate gyrus on top of the corpus callosum, which is this area right here. Cortex on the occipital lobe, which would be around this area. And then we have the secondary visual cortex, which is surrounding the primary visual cortex, which would be this area right here. And then we have um, structures for the coronal and horizontal views but you can't see the caudate nucleus, the putamen, globus pallidus, internal capsule, external or extreme capsule on here, or the claustrum, but you can see the insular cortex, which is the convergence of the parietal, temporal, and frontal lobes, and that's gonna be the insular cortex. The amygdala, which is by the hippocampus, would be this area right here, and this is the hippocampus in their amygdala. And this would be the oncus. 
this area right here. And then we have the arteries. So, the arteries. Okay, this is how I interpret it. So, we have the internal carotids right here, right? So from the internal carotids, you would have the anterior communicating artery, which is this and this, and then it connects it to the anterior cerebral artery, which would be that. And then from that, this is the internal carotid, and so these would be the middle cerebral arteries. And then we have the posterior communicating artery isn't shown here, but then we have the posterior cerebral artery, which is, oops, which is this right here. And then we have the basilar artery, the basilar artery, which is this right here. And these would be considered the vertebral artery. And then we have the superior cerebellar artery. So that would be these arteries right here, superior cerebellar artery. Then we have the anterior cerebellar arteries right here. And then we have the posterior cerebellar arteries right here. And I don't think you can see the anterior spinal on here or posterior spinal. So that's it for the arteries. And now we have lab three, which focuses on the cerebellum and brainstem. So we have the folia, which are like the leaves of the cerebellum. And then we have the vermis, which is this area right here, which separates the two hemispheres. And then we have the tonsils, which are these things right here. Those are the tonsils. The arbor vitae is the tree-like structure on the, sag on the sagittal view. And then we have the primary fissure, which I believe would be this would be the primary fissure. And then we have the superior cerebellar preduncal, inferior and middle. And so this would be the superior cerebellar, cerebellar peduncles, inferior cerebellar peduncles, then middle. And those can also be seen on the brain stem, which is right here. So that's superior cerebellar peduncle, inferior cerebellar peduncle. And this is middle cerebellar peduncle. And then we have the cerebellar lobes. And this would be the anterior cerebellar lobe, posterior lobe. And then the flocky nodular lobe is inside around this area right here. And then on the cross section, we have the cerebellar cortex, which surrounds the subcortical white matter, which is this area. And um, that's all you can see for the cerebellum. And now we have the brainstem. So, on the posterior side or dorsal view, we have the superior colliculi, inferior colliculi, and right here where um, the fourth ventricle ends into the spinal cord would be the obex. Um, and this would be the floor of the fourth ventricle right here. So that's the floor of the floor, fourth ventricle. And then the dorsal median sulcus is the middle line right here. And the dorsal intermediate sulcus is this line right here and right here, which separates the fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cutaneous. So right here is the dorsal intermediate sulcus again. And then the fasciculus cutaneous are right here, this outer area. In this outer area and the cutaneous tubercle is this area right here and like it's kind of like kind of extends out and the fasciculus gracilis is this area and the gracilis tubercle is this right here 
And the cerebellar peduncles are this area right, is this area right here. And the interpenduncular fossa is that area in there. I don't know if you could see it, but it's way in there. It's like a little, it's like a fossa. Is the basis pointus right here. And this is the pyramids, this area right here. And the, the desiccation of the pyramids would be around this area, but it would be more um, visible on the actual specimens. And the olive, this part right here is the olive. And the ventral median fissure is this right here. This is the ventral median fissure. And then um, for the next part, the mid ring. Um, so we know that this is the cerebral peduncles and the substantia nigra and red nucleus is not shown on here. But the peri aqueductal gray would be around the cerebral aqueduct. It would be the gray matter that surrounds the cerebral aqueduct. And the tectum of midbrain would be like this area where the colliculi are. So that would be the tectum of midbrain. And then we have, um, okay. So now we have the cranial nerves. Number one, we have the olfactory nerve. Number two, the optic nerve, this is the optic nerve. Number three, ocular motor nerve, this is the ocular motor. The trochlear nerve is this nerve right here, which extends behind the brainstem. And this one is the trigeminal nerve, number five. Abducens, number six. Can you see that? Abducens, number six. Facial, number seven. Number eight, vestibular cochlear. Number nine, glossopharyngeal, right here. Vagus is right on top of that. Number 10, spinal accessory is this one right here. And hypoglossal is this right here. And that's all.